Hi there, welcome to this fifth session and we're going to look at the library induction and indeed how to use different sources to, to write. To look at the importance of sources, uh, why we use them in academic work, how different types of literature review and why we use them uh, for postgraduate study, different types of sources you can use to inform your research, Go look through some of the more common bibliographic databases that we use in management research. I'll give you an overview of the writing journey and then finish off uh, with some uh, summary and, and then questions that are typically asked. So why is it important to use sources to underpin your work? Well, as students, MBA students, uh, research methods students, uh, you are your scientists. Um, you are, your job is to see what's out there uh, with regard to the area you're looking at and then pull this together to create an understanding of, of what's going on. Uh, it's not about your opinion, it's not about um, general thoughts uh, in, in the media, though there are places for that. Generally, what we're looking for is what's scientifically and rigorously understood about a subject so far. And for that reason, um, most of your work at postgraduate level is, is based on literature review. It's about understanding the existing conversations with regard to your subject area uh, so you can understand the story so far, how that applies to uh, the phenomena you're looking at the, the, how that applies to management practice and indeed how the current research is limited and where further research is required. One thing that um, uh, often comes up in class is often the question I'm often asked is well, so how do I communicate my opinion? Uh, you might be an experienced practitioner with something to say well actually there is no real space for you to communicate your opinion that, that's not really the role uh, of, of a scientist and, and, and that's what you are, you know, a management scientist, a social scientist. Uh, your role is to objectively observe what is understood and apply it to uh, phenomena. Uh, you can draw conclusions, you can state how these findings are useful and indeed we encourage that, um, but there's no place for uh, an opinionated evaluation of, of what is read. Okay, so looking through uh, the literature review, uh, we're going to talk about different types of literature review. Uh, we're going to talk about how to start off uh, writing literature review, different sources of literature, uh, bibliographic databases, how to uh, search within them, once you've got data, how to export your data, and then how to make sense of what you've found. So those are the things we're going to talk about in the next couple of slides. So different types of literature review. So if you are reading journal articles, you might come across some headings that say that this is a, a systematic literature review. So what is a, a systematic review? So a systematic literature review is a review of clearly formulated questions that uses systematic and explicit methods to identify, select and critically appraise relevant research and to collect and analyze data from the studies that are included in the review. Statistical methods such as meta-analysis may or may not be used to analyse and summarise the results of the included studies. So that's a, so it's an, a textbook definition of what a systematic review is. It's a highly structured uh, process whereby you select clear inclusion and exclusion criteria uh, based on your research question and you look at all of the literature that meets that criteria and you systematically work through it to understand what is known. So a systematic review aims to address these problems of identifying, critically evaluating, and integrating the findings of all relevant high quality individual studies, addressing one or more research questions. A good systematic review might achieve most or all the following. So establish to what extent existing literature has progressed towards clarifying a particular problem. It should identify relations, contradictions, gaps and inconsistencies in the literature and explore reasons for these, for example, by proposing new conceptualization or theory which accounts for inconsistency. 
it might formulate general statements or an overarching conceptualization to make a point rather than summarize all the points everyone else has made. Should we comment on, evaluate, extend, or develop theory? In doing these things, prevent implications for practice and policy, and I should absolutely describe directions for future research. A critical literature review is different from a systematic review. The objectives of a critical literature review uh, is to summarise current knowledge. It's to provide a critical review of the literature that demonstrates awareness of the current state of knowledge in the subject area, and what you need description skills. It's a synthesis of resources showing the strengths and limitations, omissions and binds. Uh, these are critical skills and how the research fits into this wider context analytical skills. Typically, we'll ask you to undertake a critical literature review. And indeed, most literature review sections which you read in journal articles are critical literature reviews. Uh, one thing when doing a literature review, particularly in the literature review section, it's important to understand what is literature, what is not literature. So when we talk about reviewing literature, uh, what we mean is academic publications, uh, journal articles uh, or edited book chapters, uh, typically the, the two main things that fall into this categorization category. OK, so say you've been given the assignment and you, you're going to conduct a literature review, how, how do you start? You've got 6,000 words uh, to write, that sounds like an awful lot of words, what's your starting point? So, one thing that's a very uh, much a waste of time is just to go gather literature about something you don't know much about. So by doing this, you're going to miss important papers. You're probably going to find something that makes sense and stick to it, therefore with biased arguments. You waste time going through loads and loads of search results. You end up with a very uh, surface, top level, basic understanding of the topic. So what you have to do, first of all, before you can research, is to learn a little bit about the subject. And this can only be really done by reading. So textbooks are a good place to start. Uh, textbooks, I suggest, are a very good learning tool. They're not a very good teaching tool, uh, not a very good research tool, sorry. Um, but they are excellent to give you an overview of what the subject is, uh, who the main authors are, what the main theories are. So they're a good place to start. Uh, Google, uh, likewise, isn't a bad place to start. So uh, just a, a general search term for you, um, and that'll bring up um, hopefully re relevant things to your search. Um, Twitter is an excellent resource. If you download Twitter and just in the search function, you'll get a good understanding of uh, what's currently discussed about your subject area. Uh, as with in the newspapers, uh, general media, professional publications are also excellent sources to get a good idea of, of, of what's going on. You should get to the stage where you can talk reasonably knowledgeable uh, about your subject. Know So once you've done that reading, you'll get a feel for who the main authors are, what the main arguments are, the main themes, uh, the different perspectives from which the subject is understood, and really any gaps in literature as well. Now what you have to do is identify the keywords from your assignment title or reading. Uh, and from these keywords, you're going to generate some uh, search terms that you can enter into the bibliographic databases to get you the specific literature sources you need to inform your literature review. So, talk about sources of literature. Uh, we've talked about textbooks and a lot of uh, student and undergraduate study textbooks are highly emphasised uh, as, as the, the source of all knowledge. And they are, they are useful. As I mentioned previously, they are, they are excellent teaching aids. Um, what you'll find them amongst them is some good, you understand what the seminar works are, the, the main works in your area. Uh, you'll have a, they'll give you good breadth of basic theory and concepts. Um, however, typically they are dated. They will not talk about the leading edge, just by the very nature 
of they are talking about other works and therefore those other works have to exist first and then they're put together and then published so they're going to be several years behind uh, contemporary theory and they're also biased in as much as what a textbook gives you is what the author thinks you should know about that subject uh, and, and on that basis they are they're useful for learning about a subject but they're not useful for research and they should they've got no real place within a literature review what does have um, place of a literature review uh, are journal articles and um, peer review conference proceedings. Uh, they are very narrow, much narrower in nature than uh, textbooks are, uh, highly focused around about a research question typically. Um, re review articles are generally a bit more broad and they're absolutely useful to understand how a literature stream has developed, or indeed the, the supporting literature streams in a topic area, uh, different perspectives used, how mature that area is, the type of works published. Um, typically, they are more up to date than textbooks, uh, but they are not as up to date as practitioner articles. However, they are peer reviewed, uh, there's some rigour to them, and this is the foundation of our academic knowledge. Academic knowledge. Uh, advances through uh, the publication of academic research, which is found in, in journal articles. So absolutely, the journal articles and peer-reviewed conference proceedings are the foundational works uh, upon which to base your literature review. Things which can help provide context and to provide practical rationale uh, for your literature review, so things you typically put in your introduction section as to say, look, this is the delta between practice and, and research. Here's uh, the reason why practical is important. You'd find these sort of things in uh, newspaper, Twitter, professional publications. Um, obviously, these give an excellent, uh, excellent for practitioner perspectives. They aren't peer reviewed, so you have to be careful what you take out of them. Uh, anyone can publish on on Twitter uh, and um, to an extent professional publications. They can be useful to identify gaps in academic knowledge, so uh, by nature of them are very much more up to date. And if there's emergent themes saying look, these are problems we can't quite address them, you go to the academic literature and the answers aren't there. It's a reasonable strong indication that maybe some research is needed to be done to try and bridge that gap. Um, absolutely can help to narrow down, contextualise your peer-reviewed uh, research so you understand what's going on. Government publications, um, same sort of category uh, as in newspaper Twitter professional publications. They are reliable uh, in as much as they've gone through a rigorous process to get published. They are up to date, but again, they're not scientific. Uh, what they do is provide context. Uh, and um, explain maybe how policy and how, how findings might be implemented. Uh, again, useful for maybe uh, shaping your um, peer-reviewed research uh, or the demonstrate a practical rationale for, for your research. Okay, so now to delve into bibliographic databases. Bibliographic databases are the uh, online resources we use to access these key journals which help to inform research. You can, so once you've signed in to your university account and you click on to library uh, and, and, and then to find it, you find yourself on this page. So once you're on this page, uh, click on find databases and that will then take you through to this page where you can then uh, dropped in the all subjects bar and for our purposes we want business and it says there's 44 different databases there so once you click on business and press the black go button you then go to this page here and this uh, is highlights at the top in the yellow box uh, the useful go to bibliographic databases and most commonly used in management uh, there are the other ones down as well uh, if you want to browse through them and we'll just concentrate on 
a few of these at, at the top in the yellow box here. So the first one I want to show you is Business Source Complete. Uh, this is a very powerful uh, database uh, powered by, by EBSCO. Um, over 2,000 uh, journals are held in this database. Uh, and what I've got in here is an example of how to search it. So if you're using the top term um, and put, for example, multi-channel, uh, it will search the terms for multi and channel. Um, if you notice, however, in the and box, I've put supply chain in inverted commas, it only select, select the term supply chain where both words are together. I've changed the drop down boxes to TX all text, so it searches all text w within the journal articles rather than just the title and abstract. Once you press this and press search, your results are then displayed underneath. Our insight uh, works very similar. Um, you can have the advanced search, um, as we've noted here. And again, you set up very, very similarly uh, as you would in Business Source Complete. And then you, you uh, press the, the search uh, button and it re re uh, replies with your results. Also of use is Google Scholar. Uh, although it's not as refined as the bibliographic databases, it does have a, an enormous host of, of goods uh, of uh, academic publications there. Um, and it is uh, very, very powerful and, and, and useful. One nice, a uh, couple of nice things about it. Uh, you can, if you press on the quotation marks uh, under any particular result, it brings up the, the, the references. Uh, you can then export these. So if you're using Mendeley, for example, if you click on the Bibtex um, button at the bottom, it'll export it in the Mendeley format. You can also, if you um, click on the three lines uh, to the left of Google Scholar and you go into settings and you click on library links, you can set Google Scholar to also search the University of South Wales uh, database also. So if you go on the University of South Wales and search that um, and add, add that library link, I'll also search USW uh, return links in, in the search results as well. Um, so once you want to export your data, uh, in, in Emerald, you select uh, the ones you want to keep by putting a check mark next to them. And then you press under the pre-select, uh, download the citations, and then you give them the option of which type to do. Um, so similar to Bibtex is the type you want if you're using Mendeley. I'll talk about Mendeley in a little while uh, as, as a useful tool to um, store all, all your citations. Similar in Business Source Complete, it's a little bit more involved. So you select the ones you want by clicking on the little holder uh, to the right of the uh, of of this of the article with a little plus sign in it that adds it to the folder. Once you've done that, you click on uh, the, the the share um, and it adds adds them to the folder. Um, you then click on uh, the folder option right at the top and in the blue bar next to sign in, you've got the folder. Click on that. And then you can select everything in that folder and you can then choose to export it uh, by selecting the export option on the right hand side. Once you've selected export, uh, you can then choose how to export the citations, um, whether it's an RIS uh, for EndNote or um, any other ones like BibTex, again, halfway down for Mendeley. And once you, uh, once you select that, press save and it will then generate the download. OK, so now you've got all, um, maybe you, you've saved all of your relevant citations uh, in, in a place. You don't want to be able to make sense of them. You've got cause every journal article is probably about six or 7,000 words. And you may indeed have 70 or 80 of these uh, articles to inform your literature review. So you've got 
480,000 words potentially sitting in front of you. How on earth do you get that down to make a, 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 a six thousand word assignment? Well, the good thing is you, you don't have to read everything. So um, first and foremost, you have to read your data. Um, understand, look at the abstract, introduction, conclusion. I will tell you most things. The literature review will maybe identify literature streams for you as well. I strongly suggest you make a data table. We will talk a little bit of this uh, a little bit later in the research methods module in a bit more depth. Um, but basically, when you are um, reading a journal article, you want to know several things. Record the reference details. Uh, maybe look at um, the contribution of the article. So what do you know after reading it you didn't know before? Um, how, how is this useful? Um, um, what, what, why does the research done in the first place? Those are the sort of things you maybe want to take away with it. Once you've done that, you want to group your literature together, uh, maybe group it together by, by topic, um, and you'll have, again, we'll go through this in much more detail uh, in the research methods module, um, but what you're trying to do now in literature review is understand um, what's been said about a particular topic, where is the areas of consensus, uh, where is the areas of, of maybe debate, uh, you can also add to your body of literature by following up on some useful references uh, from your original search, you're reading an article and you, you follow the citations and don't have to find other relevant sources. Um, and it's uh, th this is a, the, the, these citations are very useful. If something cite, cited a lot, if there's a piece of work that's cited in a large number of citations or you're reading articles and it always comes up, is a strong indication you should probably want to include that in your work as well. Okay, so to give a summary then, so the literature review is a very powerful academic practice that allows a reliable and valid interpretation of the state of art research in the subject area. Research and literature is not easy. And we'll, uh, this is to, the purpose of this is to give you a high level in, uh, introduction to what a literature review is and give you some sort of sense of how to maybe get some d the data out of the bibliographic databases to get you used to that subject. So it's very much still an, an induction uh, lecture. We will go through this in much more detail uh, when we talk about the research method in the research methods module. Writing up to review, it does take time. Uh, it's, it's very involving, um, but it is very worthwhile because it will increase your knowledge and your reader's knowledge about the subject if done correctly. The next session uh, shall expose some frequently asked questions uh, about study at, at master's level.